blessing and welcome forward right here to Reasonings at the Tree of Life, right here in Kingston, Jamaica. It's a beautiful Friday afternoon, Friday evening, right? And um, there's so much things in the atmosphere that um, makes this particular evening a rather unique one. Number one, it's a very, very hot day. And we've been having some superbly hot days, are overly, are extremely hot days. So I know I have a lot of people who are of the signs of the times, and I guess these things are pointing to something, to some event that's coming up. And I know in prophecies that there are actually some events coming up. Though I'm not a prophet, I will not speak of those things, but I think others are sensing that they're, they're close as well too, right? And it's coming to some kind of head. Brings me to today's topic, and I'm trying to be as calm as possible because the first time we attempted this topic, I, I guess that it caused such <laughs> uh, a myriad of responses, right? That I guess we had to, over time, reconsider and then present the information in a more wholesome manner. My topic is about Yeshua, divine Christ. The last time we said about Jesus, and I guess the word Jesus created this plethora of mixed reaction from many so-called biblical scholars, though I didn't see any official theologians responding to my, to my postings, right? So let's just say that it's passionate believers, right? One in particular kind of touched my heart and to this individual, I will answer this individual because I think I answer this individual on, on the comments, but I'll answer this individual in a broader context where everyone can understand for this new video about Yeshua. Thing is, when I did that video, that video was the first video we were doing right here at Cedar Media at Tree Alive. We did not have a clear philosophy around the videos. We did not have a target market or a target audience that we were thinking we were doing this for. As a matter of fact, we were thinking we would find more people like us who would come through the Rastafarian traditions and were transcending into a more wholesome, holistic view of Christ and the Christ-like way. So that was the first reason. I am not a part of a church, neither are any one of us here. Not that we have not gone to church since our awakening, but we have found the true sense of church that we consider is in the brethren, in our friendship. That's how we have found best concordance in the spirit of Christ in the spirit of Yeshua. So when we were doing that video, my searching eyes, my, my movement of my eyes was because one, I had not been in front of a camera for a very long time, and two, I was yet unsure on how I was to present my experiences. It was yet new to me in this medium. So, those who were saying, my statements of Yeshua were more conceptual and not experiential. You are, hallelujah, incorrect. Incorrect. The way in which I was presenting that information at that specific time was based upon a little bit of my intellectual training and I did not think the audience were going to be so squarely a Christian oriented listenership or viewership. I did not know that. So my information was more of a open-ended reference where it was heterogeneous that it was angles upon the life of Yeshua, that it wasn't just a Christian man being educated in Christian doctrines and dogmas, speaking about 
Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It was rather Jerome Sage Butler who had a very extremely unique experience and had yet not done my video on Christ saving from hell, saving me from hell, so I did not at that point was so open to share my experience. To continue further now to actually get to Christ. References to the name are countless. Depending on your language, kindred, tongue, you would have referred to him based upon your positions. Some call them today ideologies, but lots of the ideologies that refer to Christ in many terms like Isa and in terms such as great teacher, world teacher, as Messiah, there are many different references, inferences to how people see Yeshua. Even the term Yeshua said to be of Hebrew origin, one, through examination, it is said to be some form of bastardization, a mixture of Chaldean and Hebrew. So it's almost like a bastardized language. So is it a genuine reference to the name of Christ, which is the title we give to the anointed, of which I mentioned? Some say mashallah based upon their, again, their culture, where on earth they were in relation to the appearance of Yeshua, of Jesus, of Jesus Christos. The many names are but reference points to the truth, the light, and the way. Who was, is, and yet is to be. Who was there before the foundation of the earth present within the spirit of the Godhead. Christ being the sovereign Lord of this creation, hallelujah, is God in permeance. Now you might not recognize my references, my inferences, now my statements on Christ, but they are based upon my experience of Christ. They are based upon my experience of Yeshua. Now, after I came out of the underworld, I had an experience of Christ that was most clear to me and of which I will speak today. An experience of Yeshua of which I will speak today. There was a particular day I was at, let's say, our major metropolis. It's called Halfway Tree. Halfway Tree is like the center of, of, of you know, St. Andrew, right? So we have it as like our, our capital, our little capital city city, you know, even though it's Kingston and Kingston, but which is like, you know, the middle way. And it's kind of, it's like, a, it's a busy place, right? Many things happen there. That's where all the, the major parties and cultural events usually happen in the city anyway. So it's the hot spot. It's a metropolis. So I'm in Alfred Street one night. We're coming from one of those hot parties. I believe it was Weddy Weddy, which is like a dance party, dance hall culture. Anyway, so coming from Weddy Weddy, we stop at a place called Island Grill, right? Island Grill is this Jamaican restaurant that does a mixture of, I guess, somewhat pseudo vegan and you know, um, and meat eaters dishes, right? So, it's a 24 restaurant, it's in a plaza called Twin Gates, right? Anyhow, we're there, and we go to get something to eat, and think we ate, and then, and then we, we um, there was this little commotion outside. I saw some people making some issue with this guy that looks crazy and very emaciated and just really not in a good state. So anyway, I went outside and I noticed what was happening. I stood aside a little and I was watching what was going on. I got a little scared because I was beginning to feel this guy's energy and the energy of what was happening. So, and I kind of felt that this guy was kind of searching everybody's energy. So I got really angry. And I kind of saw why everyone was angry at him. Because I guess he was, he was begging and there was this angry, aggressive retort from people. Which is not always natural for, for us treating the less fortunate in Jamaica. We are, we are very spiritual, so we don't normally do that to, to, to these guys, right? So if, if we're doing that, or if someone is doing that, it usually is something weird. Not that we are right for doing it, so let's get me correctly. Anyhow, so I said to myself, why am I even in this situation? I don't even want to be hearing this. And I, I felt like he was going to come over to me to beg me. And I was like, listen, I don't want this guy to beg me. I don't want anything to do with this guy. So I go in my pocket, and they're like three, Jamaican dollar coins I have, right? 
And these three Jamaican dollar coins, I said to, to myself, in my spirit, I'm going to give him three pennies unto death, right? So I'm just going to give him death and let him keep his filthy self from off of me, right? And don't speak to me or whatever. So anyway, I go and I, he comes over and he begs and I give him these three, right? And now he's there making a conversation. So I'm trying to get rid of him. I'm like, why are you guy? Get away from me. I mean, you know, well, you know what I mean? You know, leave me the hell alone. I mean, you know, have, some, have something about you. And he looks at me and says, you are telling me to have something about me? You who offered me three pennies unto death? I jumped in myself. This was not spoken out of me. This was not spoken. My friend beside me did not know this. Neither did anyone within the environment know this. This was not a spoken thought. This was not something I expressed through words. This was my personal, internal behavior. He said, you is talking about justice or want to be left alone? Who offered me three pennies unto death? So I got angry and said, who the hell are you? Why are you in my thoughts? He's like, it is beings like you who pushed me to the edge of my sanity that no matter how much you try to please humankind, you yet cannot please them. That even if you should turn and run, they would pursue you even to the darkest most part of reality to afflict you. No escape, he says, from this treachery called human existence. That is why I am like I am, an abhorrence to you. In his statement, I heard the words of Christ, of Yeshua. What you have done unto the least of them, you have done unto me. And in that moment, I knew no least, lest him, but him. I know no lesser than him. He was the least that I knew that I, in my ego in that moment could suggest that I know and in that moment was Christ revealed in a word to me an offering to me Yeshua came through in an offering I went home that night that morning and when I went to sleep I had a vision Yeshua came to me I remember him being dressed in a very pale tunic, like in onto a poncho. It went all the way down. It was very pale in colors. It was like maybe onto a light burg a light um um like khaki and what beige and khaki. It's very light, but not so much khaki, but very beige. It was very light, but it was obviously he was wearing it for a while, right? It was very wet and it's and it was for hot weather garments, right? He was very, 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 hallelujah, dark of skin. One of the darkest beings of skin color I have ever encountered. Next thing, hallelujah, I recall about Yeshua, his locks. At first it wasn't so clear, then it came clearer to me. He had, he, he had locks all the way down to his tunics. It didn't seem to touch the ground, it appeared to touch the ground, but I wasn't sure, right? Because it, it, there was so much frequency within the conversation it was hard to remember. And even since we attempted to do this video and it didn't come the first time out, he has come clearer and reminded me of the experience. Now, number one thing that was very clear in that experience, when he spoke to me, I asked him a very clear question. And I think this is one of the, the, the things I want to impart. I think my personal experience, this is what I want to impart. I said to him, what do I call you? Hallelujah. It was very important. What do I call you? He said, call me brethren. He did not give me a title. He did not give me a name. He said, call me brethren, meaning friend. He said, call me brethren. He said he is a Hebrew Israelite. He said he is from the Ishmaelites. I do not know about religious theocracy, theology, or theosophy. So when I speak such things, they are from the experience of Yeshua through Esau that I have had. 
so i do not know where that falls in doctrinal rever reference or, or inference or i because i could not say hebrew israelite hallelujah ishmaelite and that has been my spiritual experience in a clear essence of who yeshua is now i have had other experiences like the one i had in hell how did it appear in hell i said it before but many people did not understand when he appeared in hell i did not see features because it was the soul's resonance i saw the light the light so i could not see his face nor could i recognize hallelujah his features but in this vision i recognized his eyes were jet black but the blackness of his eyes were likened unto a light like a burning flame like a fire alive in his eyes a burning fire that you could see like peals of lightning would go around the retina he was something to behold yet i must say this about him he was not intense i don't know why he want me to say that but hallelujah but he wants me to, 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 to recount that he was not this intense character that we have been sold in so many plagiarism in so many religious historical edicts language reference canonizing all these ecumenicals all these gospels a most healing soul he is a most gentle healing soul he is restoration hallelujah is in his being is in his presence my experience it, it, it wasn't an overwhelming push you down on your face worship me now being it was a being most friendly i could ever know that one that genuinely care he says to her liken unto the samaritan he's given me this word he's saying liken hallelujah he said liken unto the samaritan the good samaritan he's just an experiential being goodness is what he is he doesn't speak of it he is it what he does is good so we create philosophies we create doctrines of his good works of his good nature of his good presence of his good being so i know there's some who might be shocked that because we have so much christian minded people who are following our channel maybe you're expecting some highly supernatural presentation that's why you're chiding my soul maybe you're expecting i'm supposed to be some beacon of providence or something i am an individual who had almost lost my entire life my soul to the pits of shaul I am not concerned about your opinions of how I see Yeshua. I'll be caught up in your mind's definition. I am not here to validate you. Are you here to validate me? I am sharing my experience of Yeshua. And he never said to call him Christ or Jesus or anointed our beloved, our great saviour. Those are titles we inculcate in ourselves about him. My experience in my experience of which is authority to me, he said, I am brethren. Call me brethren. Brethren. Not this worshipping holier than thou without genuine virtue many people are worshipping christ but have no morals you say oh yeshua is my god and savior but you're indisciplined you're unclean you're filthy your behavior is unkind it's unnatural it's unrighteous it's disrespectful it's dishonorable it's disingenuous but yet you say you are a christian yet you say you are a follower of Christ. Yet you say these things. 
yet you say these things. And Christ, Yeshua, is trying to get us to understand genuine friendship. You and I are our brother's sister's keeper. So even though I'm not here to validate you, I am here to affirm the Christ in you because the Christ in me is affirmed. The light, the truth and the way has come unto me, is coming unto me consistently, showing me the path of my own awakening to the divine presence of Esau within my life so I can have the godlike perception as my presence so that kingdom of heaven can become my life, my lifestyle, my way of life, my reality, our reality in the kingdom of the living. This is dominion status. Command the wind to your presence. Command it in your presence to calmity. Still the rough seas. Settle the tumultuous activities upon the surface of terra firma. Be as Yeshua has instructed us to be. Be greater in manifestation, greater things that we will do, having this faith like the mustard seed, entering from the first gate through to the tenth gate, seeing the awakened divine self in the house of divine Isu, in the presence of our divine creator. Christ unto us has been given. Emmanuel unto us has come as our guiding light within the darkness of the fallen age and fallen ages. Beyond color, class or creed, religious or spiritual perception, believe it or that, believe it or not, Yeshua is there for you in all these clandestine groups and these organizations because these are things he made clear to me. So he is not just in, sorry, he said take out already. He's not encapsulated as a reference point of Christendom and the church. He is sovereign Lord. Remember, in your pompousness, he is sovereign Lord of all, Lord to all beings within the living cosmos, not just the human beings and not just the Christian-minded human beings with their Christian-minded dogmas and doctrine. Yeshua is for all. He is in all reference. The truth is in truth. He is truth. The light, he is light. The way for practice, he is the way. So for those who are on the practice of the way, he is the practice of the way. For those who like the truth, seeking for the truth, he is the truth of the truth. And for those who seek transcendental meditation in, in light practices, he is the light. He is the I am that we are. Seek to know him, seek to become the Christ beyond sex, class and creed heart chakra, your communicating point. His true words, his true worth is in the chakra of the heart. That true love covers the multiplicity of sins, teaches forgiveness, virtues of kindness, love, mercy, sharing, faithfulness, being forgiving in allness, in all nature, being temperate in your behavior, being moderate in activities, being respectful in, in pursuits and purpose, being straightforward, honest in your activity, being a just, true and moral being. These are the desires Christ has spoken into us that we should bring into 
manifestation as the actual factual actuality of our actualization our actual self actually being likened unto the father likened unto the son that beacon that comes through us that as others see they glorify the father which art in heaven above the firmament and will offer in like manner love and dignity to those who are true and genuine followers of Yeshua, Divine Christ, Divine Isu. Blessings and honor. This has been Jerome Sage Butler right here at the Tree of Life. Just speaking, offering words of clarity, remembrance, clairvoyance. Offerings on the Christ, our Divine Yeshua. Blessings and love and honor. Continue to be your godly gift, your spiritual blessing to your environment. Until next time.